So this is our second online course for the year, and the presenters tonight will be Johan Stecher and Izan Duploy, who I'll introduce a little more uh, in a while. Um, before we carry on, I am not able to go to my next slide. Um, so my, uh, please, can we abide by a few course rules? The first one is please make sure your microphones are on mute so that we do not in interfere with the presentation and um, disturb the, the proceedings. I also recommend you switch off your videos as this just eats up bandwidth and uh, interferes with the signal. And because of the number of people we have on board, please post your questions. Uh, you'll see at the bottom of your screen a place where you can post uh, questions on the chat group and we'll endeavor to do our best uh, to address these uh, before the end of the evening. The course lineups, last month we had uh, interpreting EBVs and sale catalogs. Tonight we're focusing on fertility, days to carving, importance of this and how to record it. In September, we'll be looking at carcass traits and the value of real-time ultrasound scanning for cattle breeders. In October, interpreting completeness of performance reports and how to improve star ratings. November, introduction to ILR online. December, genomics, why all the fuss? And we are looking forward to squeezing in an additional discussion group on the impact and management of inbreeding and genetic conditions in beef cattle. Briefly, for those who are attending for the first time, LRF is a member association representing eight breeds in South Africa, S.A. Bradford, Brahman, Brangus, Limousin, Simbra, Simmentala, Wagyu, and the O.S.A. Holstein. In addition, we represent the whole of the Namibian stud, stud industry under the NSBA and the whole of the Zimbabwe, uh, Zimbabwean stud industry under Zimbabwe Herd Book. Uh, we are governed by a, a board of four directors. The current chair is Meki Schneider, based in Namibia, a Brahmin and Simmentala breeder. Vice chair and co-presenter for tonight is Johan Steker. Uh, B2B uh, Simmentaler stud, Corbus Besta Simbra breeder and um, Simbra breed director, and Wayne Porter, uh, president of SA Brahman. The office, made up of myself, is on deploy, the technical officer and also responsible for the beef genomics project. Janine Lobskakny, the office manager and providing herdmaster support. Yurita van der Elts, the finance officer, and Jody Young, our technical assistant. Our primary function is to assist members to implement the world's leading genetic evaluation software to best advantage. And here we are very proud to be linked with ABRI, the Agricultural Business Research Institute based in Australia. And we market a whole suite of the software programs. And the key one that we are looking at is breed plan, which is the genetic analyses of performance records. And our key event for the LRF is our Stockman School. And this year, we're very proud to host our 15th LRF Stockman School. This year, it will be held 11th to the 13th of October at Aldham, just outside Pentersburg. The theme this year is Profit Drivers and Bull Selection, and this is geared to all emerging commercial and stud producers. It is a three-day event. We have a wide range of local, regional, and international presenters covering a wide range of topics bringing to you the latest technologies and experiences in animal production. I encourage you to go onto the website and register www.stockmanschool.co.za. 
So tonight we'll be looking at days to calving and, it, and the reason for this fertility is very, very important. And as Prof. Bob Weaver, Kansas State University and a previous participant and lecturer at one of our Stockman schools notes, pregnancy has four times greater economic impact than any other production trait. And one of our best measures of fertility in females is days to calving. And at this juncture, I will hand over to Johann Steger to talk to you about fertility and days to calving. Thank you. I've stopped sharing is on. Right, thank you. I hope everybody is on board. Can you hear me? Can somebody just wave you on? I can hear you, John. Thank you so much. Um, right, we've got some lots of ground to cover tonight. Uh, Mario's already mentioned that fertility is one of the most economically important traits. There's no cough, you've got nothing to sell. Or in other terms, nothing grows as slow as no calf. Our problem, however, is, is that fertility is a lowly heritable trait, greatly influenced by the environment and management. But there is a genetic component. It is possible to improve your herd's genetics uh, in regards to fertility. Uh, there's a couple of heritability uh, percentages and right down at the bottom is days to carving but uh, from our friends out of America uh, this is the EPD version although the EPD always provide the best estimate of an animal's genetics they are especially valuable when applied to lowly heritable traits this because when an animal own record is a poor indicator of his genetic makeup, gathering information on all its relatives is the only means we currently have to get a clear picture of the fertility genetics involved. Uh, this is some South African data that came from C.P. Musman. If fertility is 10, growth is 2, and the carcass quality would be one. Uh, this is some weightings out of uh, the local breeds uh, importance of days to carving or fertility then, or then let's rather say fertility expressed as days to carving, Simenthaler at 22, Brahman at 21, uh, Simbra on their self-replacing Wiener index at 22, Brangus on their replacement and feedlot index at 19. You can see of all the traits, very heavily weighted and in most instances, the most important trait. Now here's the normal, uh, a normal, normal distribution of fertility genetics. Uh, you've got the average in the middle. So 50% of the uh, females around would be above average fertile. However, there is, in better management conditions, uh, that blue block, uh, block is this females, which is below average fertile, but they also coughed. And then there is the easy ones to identify, that's the below average fertile animals that did not cough. Now, calling the open I, cows will prob... Sorry? Uh, sorry, I've got some interference. Can I proceed? Please proceed, Johan. 
Thank you. Uh, culling the open cows will probably not give rapid progress in the herd fertility because we've got some problems identifying uh, the above average fertile animals because how do we uh, describe, or how do we get that blue block described? Now, there's a couple of efforts uh, throughout the world to try to describe fertility genetics. If we've got the intercarving period. Most of you are familiar with that. It's a simply a measurement from uh, date of carving to date of carving. Uh, there's an open period, which consists of what the red block is there, the voluntary waiting period. There's your uh, breeding season, and then you've got your gestation length till the next calving date. Our problem with intercalving period as a fertility measure is that red block, that voluntary withholding period, because the breeder can decide. That. And by way of illustration, I was in Namibia a couple of years ago, was extremely dry. The breeder I visited postponed his uh, covering season, mating season, uh, with two and a half months. That means his herd's average intercalving period would have uh, dramatically uh, gone the wrong way. But the big thing to remember, the genetics of the cow herd didn't change. All that changed was management. So that is why we say that the intercalving period is, can be greatly affected by management. And the one thing we must remember, that cows that calve at an older age tend to have a better intercalving period because they fully mature, less impact on the uh, system and they uh, get into uh, pregnancy easier than animals that calf at a younger age. Uh, and to further describe, uh, uh, then we have a, uh, other uh, fertility measures, reproduction indexes. The one I'm quite familiar with is uh, the Simenthaler one, which attempts to uh, take age of first calving and intercalving period and blend that into an index to try to compensate for the, those animals that calf at the later age. And currently the Simenthaler index says age first calf 30 months and intercalving period of 365 days would be uh, 100. Uh, where we work on below and over. Management obviously plays a big factor in indexes, just as it is an intercalving period. Uh, and your age first calving is not a great indicator of the age of puberty, because if you chase the bull into your IFAS, you simply don't know which percentage, percentage of them are cycling or not cycling. Uh, then we have the American way on fertility measures, stability. Uh, it predicts the probability that the bull's daughters entering the herd will stay around for six years with the assumption that those who IFAS calf at 24 months and open cows are cold. But you will feel that this is a very complex trade because cows are not only culled for fertility, they can be culled for a numerous other reasons. Soundness, walking ability, productivity, uh, winning weight, temperament, and even breeders' preference for the red or the black ones. Uh, although it's a complex trade, there is lots of published data that with this EPD, you can improve stability, that probability that a cow will be around for six years. 
Then we've got the days to carving, uh, fertility measure, the true measure, a genetic measure. Here we've got a little diagram trying to explain to you uh, how uh, days to carving work. Days to carving EBVs are estimates of the genetic differences between animals in the time from the start of the joining period uh, when the bull is introduced until the subsequent carving. You would immediately see our breeder that postponed his mating period for two and a half months. If he uses a dose to carving fertility measurement, there would be no change because this clock starts the day the bull is introduced. And what we are looking at is to shorten the red arrow, which is called the main variation, the shorter we can get the period from the bullets introduced from to the conception date. That's what we're looking for. That is the more fertile animals. Obviously, in these calculations, uh, when these EBVs are calculated, shorter gestation length, stuff like that, is taken to account. The immediate problem or perceived problem with uh, this measurement is that cow on the, the left hand side of your screen that comes into heat a week or five days before the bull is introduced and she might then uh, main variation period might appear to be longer because she was so lucky to uh uh, come into it before the bull is introduced, whilst the other cow, cow might come, might cycle five days after the bull is introduced. But for that reason, um, valid EBV calculations are done on six cycles. And the st statistics would tell you it's virtually impossible that our cow on the left-hand side will every time in the mating period just over, overlay before the bull is introduced. There's another little picture here to try to explain to you exactly the same thing. We record the bulling date and then the days to when the calf is born. For those cows that don't calf, when the EBV is calculated, a day's penalty will be introduced because she's obviously less fertile than arguably this cow A, with, which coughed after 340 days when the bull was introduced. Right, now let's under, try to understand our uh, days to carving EBV. We know the heritability is low. We know that we need repeat records, six per cow, to, to get out good quality data. We obviously want lower, more negative uh, days to carving EPVs. And that simply tells you that those cows, cows with more negative days to carving uh, got uh, conceived earlier than the average. The cow's EBV on accuracy on the EBV is low, but the key is uh, the size. Those sires with 25 to 50 daughters with uh, days to carving data give us wonderful information where we can make rapid progress in, in improving days to carving. Uh, there is some correlations on days to carving with other traits, uh, some of the fat traits, scrotal size, uh, some very exciting work on age to puberty. If we can determine that, that is of all the fertility traits, probably the highest durability. And then some very nice correlations between true age of puberty and days to carving. Now, just to give us an idea what we're talking about, uh, this is just the extraction from the Simantala database. Uh, it varies from minus, minus 13 days to plus about seven days. 
if we use a bullet at the top and a bullet at the bottom, uh, and we take into account that half the genetics are transferred, it makes about a 10-day difference. Now, 10 days in a, calf's in a calf's life is 10 kilograms. At yesterday's auction price here, uh, that is 360 rand. Now, with 200 cows, it becomes real, real money. And just to show that uh, uh, is progress possible, on the left-hand side there, we've got uh, the genetic trends of uh, Bruno. Uh, you can see the breed, the green line, is making huge strides in improving days to calving. And uh, Verona is, over the past 20-odd years, outstripped uh, the breed with huge improvements in days to calving. Right inside is my own herd. Uh, the Simenthaler breed is not shooting the lights out on their improvements on days to calving. But in my own herd, the trend is definitely there. And uh, now own uh, aim is to constantly improve our days to calving EBV and the way we do it is simply on bull selection. Now why we talk a lot on bull selection is remember that after three rounds of bulls only 80 uh, those bulls would have contributed 87 percent of the genetics in your cow herd. So if you can find those bulls with the uh, large negative days to calving EBVs, you can very quickly, after three rounds of bulls, have that fertile genetics inside your herd. And let's look a little bit to the future. Uh, uh, the low heritability traits, uh, it's age to age of puberty has been identified on the, the Brahman genome. Everybody knows now where it sits. And uh, I see some very exciting stuff in the future of improving genetic progress on, uh, on fertility. Janine, uh, he's on. That's my old story. Thank you. Thank you very much, Johan. Good evening, everyone. Um, I will continue with the talk on days to calving. So, as was mentioned, um, breed plan uses days to calving as a female fertility trait. And I'm going to, to try to um, further describe why we, we think it's a, a good measure of female fertility. And I'm also going to look into how do we record and submit days to calving information. So as was mentioned, um, days to calving is the period from when the bulls are put to the cows until the um, subsequent calving. Um, compared to intercalving period, there's a um, voluntary wait, waiting period. Um, and that's the, the main difference between the two. So why do we prefer days to calving? Um, it's easy to, to record. So we um, submit data in the form of mating lists. The other nice thing of days to calving is that it is a trait that can be used in both heifers and cows. And um, as was mentioned, we want to identify the, the females that conceive early in the, the breeding season as it is assumed that they are more fertile as they need less estrus cycles to, to conceive. And this is easily identified by days to calving. So what we, we want to do when we 
we look at genetics and animals' genetic ability is we, we need to exclude as many uh, of the environmental or non-genetic effects as possible so um, that we, we can focus on the, the genetics. By using days to calving rather than ICP or aged first call, some of these non-genetic factors are automatically excluded. For example, the influence of, of droughts on ICPs and also the, the breeder that deliberately um, does not put the bulls to the cows due to various reasons. So immediately um, we can exclude some of the, the environmental effects by using days to calving as a, a trait. If we, we look further into today's to carving, um, what information do we, we use? We use all the, the mating information of a female within a specific breeding season. Um, but it is important to realize that for the calculation, we only make use of um, natural mated information. So a bull um, put to the cows um, and serve them, we do not include AI data or um, cows that has been subject to an ET program, an embryo transfer program, etc. cetera. Um, there is currently research underway to include the, the AI data but currently we only look at um, natural mated cow, uh, cow info. So um, if you, you use days to calving, you look at cows and heifers that were run under the same conditions prior to the start of the, the mating season. So they should be fairly in the, the same condition and they are exposed to the to the bull at the, the same time. So the only difference is, um, is how long it takes for them to, to conceive. And that's the, the genetics we, we want to, to capture, those that conceive early in the, the breeding season. So what information should be recorded? All joining information, natural matings, AI matings, embryo transfers, um, pregnancy test results, that's optional. It's currently not included in the analysis, um, but they, they are um, looking at how they can incorporate the information. Um, the other thing that you need to record is days to, uh, days to carving disposal codes. Um, it's highly recommended that readers record the information. Um, it is not the same as the society cancellation codes. Um, it's the, the reason why mated heifers and cows, so cows that were put to the bull, are removed from the herd before calving time. So at calving time, they are not present in the herd anymore. And breed plan wants to know why are they not there anymore? Did you call them due to fertility issues or um, any other reason? Um, she had horns, um, walking ability, etc. They want to know why, what, um, what's the reason? Is it fertility or some or other issue? The last thing that we, we need to do record is the, the calves born. Um, we want to know all calves born, dead or al alive, um, when we, we um, calculate days to calving. Because if we, we do not um, register those, those dead calves, it seems as though the cow never calved, but she actually calved, um, the calf was dead. Um, so I'm going to look into how do we record and submit each and every um, piece of information. Um, so if we look at the, the joining information, 
as was said, we, we need to record all the, the joining information, um, successful and unsuccessful joinings or matings. So we we need to have the event type, was it a natural AI meeting? Um, what was the, the bull ID to which the, the cow was mated? The bull in dates, the AI date, um, when the bull was removed or the bull out date. Um, what is also important is the management group. This identifies females in the group whose fertility may be affected um, either to um, prior or during the um, mating season. There was some or other non-genetic factor that influenced her fertility. This can be a number of things, different nutrition, she was sick, there was an injury, et cetera. So we need to, to record that and tell the system, this cow um, might um, not have um, conceived as early as she would have because her condition was not good due to sickness, et cetera. So we have a number of Excel templates um, that we can use to, to submit the days to carving information. And then, um, the, or the other way is by using herd management software programs compatible with breed plans such as Herdmaster. So previously we had one days to carving or mating list Excel spreadsheet to record the information. But recently, BreedPlan has introduced um, four separate Excel spreadsheets to um, submit the information. And we're going to, to look at each of these. So with each and every of these Excel templates, you have three tabs at the bottom. The one is um, instructions, so they tell you specifically what information should be recorded in each of the, the columns. And then you have an example data sheet. Um, we will look into how those look just now. And then you have the actual blank um, template that you can use for, for your animal's information. So the first one is for, for mating um, information for both natural and AI matings. So this is basically what the, the template looks like. You fill in your, your herd ident, your cow ident, and then you have the, the invent date or the bull in date for natural matings. And then you have your um, event codes. So in the case of natural matings, you will use an N. You will also include the sire to which this cow was mated. In the case of multiple sire matings, you will use your multiple sire ident, um, and you don't have to put each and every bull within that multi-sire group um, in the Excel spreadsheet. Then you have your management group as was described, and then you have your bull out date, so the date you, you remove the bull from the cows. Um, so you will see if the cow was mated to more than one bull in the same um, breeding season. So um, the first bull was put in with the cows um, the 1st of June, the second one, second half of July, then you will repeat the cow with the, the next bull. The next um, example is um, recording artificial insemination or AI records. So if you make use of synchronization, you will use a, a Z for synchronization. That's the, the event code. Then the next thing is if you make use of um, AI on observed heat, you will indicate that with an a I and give it a, a date. 
and the, the sire or the, the semen you used. And if you make use of a natural um, follow-up bull, you can enter that event as well. Um, there's two different codes that's used for AI. It's the, the I for um, AI on observed heat. And then if you make use of fixed time AI, you will use a A. Then there's a, a second template that you can use if you make use of embryo transfer programs. In this, you will also have your, your standard information on herd and cow and event date. Um, the code that you will use for a, a, if you flushed a, a donor cow is, is D, and then you can enter the, the number of embryos flushed. The next thing that you will then do is you will indicate the cows that the embryos were, were transferred to or implanted in. You give that a date, a management group if um, needed, and uh, the rest of the information. The second thing that we said we, we need to record is pregnancy tests. This is optional, as was mentioned. This is the, the template for pregnancy test results. You have your, your standard herd and cow ident, the pregnancy test date. Um, the event code in this case is pre full, and it's just a, a system um, code used. The one that you will enter is the prick test results. So, um, you can use a P or an N, so P for pregnant, N for not pregnant, or if the, the vet gives you a, a week's pregnant, you can enter that as well, up to 20 weeks pregnant. After that, you will just use a, a P. So this is for the pe pregnancy test results. The third thing is days to carving disposal codes. In this case, you will have the, the disposal date. Again, the event code is just a, a system um, code. And then you will give the, the reason why um, you disposed of this cow. And again, remember, these are not the same as the, the cancellation codes you used to to um, make an animal inactive at the society. And if you, um, you submit these days to carving disposal codes, they will not make your animals inactive at the, the society. So there's various codes that you can use. Um, there's a, a whole list of them. The ones most important is the ones indicating that, um, for example, B, you, you sold this cow or heifer. She was um, pregnant, but you sold her as surplus um, breeding females. So it was not due to, to fertility or if not in calf. And then, as you will see, there's, there's various codes that you can use H for horns if um, she does not fit your um, coat type that you, you prefer in your herd, et cetera. Um, and um, breed plan, use the information to, to, to identify those animals that were culled from the herd, not due to genetics, but due to, to other issues. Um, so if a cow was mated and there's never a calf for her on the system or in the, the time period that um, you would expect a, a calf, they will penalize her on fertility. So they use this information to identify those that were not called due to um, fertility so that they do not penalize them. 
The fourth thing that is important for days to carving is the time period they use to calculate days to carving goes up to the, the birth of the, the calf. So you, we need to record those calves, as was mentioned, both the, the dead and the alive born calves. Otherwise, the, the cow is penalized for, for days to calving if there's no calf registered. This is through um, the normal calf registration Excel spreadsheets that we, we have. So how do we interpret days to carving EVVs? As was mentioned before, it is an estimate of the genetic difference between animals in the time from the start of the, the joining period until the, the subsequent calving. Um, it's expressed in, in days. More negative is better, better. We want to identify those that called are conceived early in the, the breeding season. This is an example of um, the EBVs that breed can calculate. And right in the middle, we have the, the days to carving. In this case, this animal's EBV is a minus seven. The breed average is minus 0 0.6. So how do we interpret it? Seven minus, um, minus 0 0.6 is minus 6.4 days divided by two as half of the, the genetics comes from the bull and the other half from the, the dam. So on average, if we, we use this bull in our herd, his daughters will calve 3.2 days earlier than if we used an average bull on days to calving. Shorter days to calving identifies females that will reach puberty early, conceive early in the breeding season, Calf early in the, the calving season, rejoin quickly after calving, and deliver a calf um, in a shorter gestation period. So, in conclusion, days to calving EBVs provide a useful tool for breeders to improve genetics of their females for fertility in association with their routine management and, and calling strategies. As um, Johan mentioned, it is lowly heritable. So you need several records to increase the accuracy of your days to calving EBVs. And um, as it is lowly heritable, it will, will be one of the, the traits that will greatly benefit from the incorporation of genomics. For more information, you can contact the, the LRF um, office via the, the different platforms, and then we can move over to, to questions.